The scene begins in the streets of New York, where Olivia, a young artist is walking home after a challenging day in the art studio. Tess, her ever-supportive friend and roommate, greets her warmly upon her return home, curious about Olivia's time spent in the studio. With a heavy heart, Olivia reveals a blank canvas, symbolizing her lack of productivity during her studio session. Despite Tess's best efforts to lift her spirits, Olivia's frustration is still visible as she sinks into a nearby chair, expressing her struggles as an artist. As they discuss their upcoming catering gig, Olivia's mood remains sober. However, a glimmer of hope emerges when she examines the event flyer and recognizes a familiar name, Camilla Hollander, the owner of an art gallery she's been sending her samples to. She's always wanted the opportunity to show Camilla her artworks and now she gets it on a platter of gold. Suddenly, Tess shares the joyous news of landing a role in a new film, prompting a burst of happiness from Olivia, who embraces her friend tightly. She also reveals she's leaving the cater waiting job and moving out of Chicago soon. Tess's revelation of leaving the catering job to pursue her acting dreams, coupled with the move to Chicago, catches Olivia off guard. Grateful for Tess's unwavering support, Olivia absorbs the news of their impending move-out deadline with a mix of concern and determination, realizing the challenge that lies ahead. With nowhere else to turn and Valentine's Day looming, Olivia's worries deepen as they set off for their evening job. Meanwhile, in the kitchen of the event venue, Olivia and Tess are hard at work getting canapes to serve the guests. Olivia's phone suddenly rings, interrupting her work. It's her sister calling, inquiring about her plans for Valentine's Day back home in Nebraska. With a hint of regret, Olivia explains that she won't be able to make it home this year. Unknown to Olivia, her boss enters the kitchen as she talks to her sister on call. She issues a stern warning to Olivia and passes. Olivia apologizes and swiftly returns her focus to the task at hand, joining Tess in serving the awaiting guests. While serving the guests, Olivia accidentally collides with a young man, both offering sincere apologies. As they exchange pleasantries, Olivia shares her hometown pride, hailing from Valentine, Nebraska. However, realizing her obligations, she politely excuses herself from the conversation, and retreats back to the kitchen to replenish the canapé trays. Back in the kitchen, Olivia confides in Tess, expressing her reluctance to approach Camilla while she's busy attending to guests on the floor. Understanding her friend's hesitation, Tess reassures Olivia that there's ample time to catch Camilla later on. Tess shifts the conversation to the topic of a charming gentleman at the event. They playfully run towards the kitchen entrance for a sneak peek. Olivia gestures towards a familiar face. It's the guy she accidentally bumped into earlier. However, to her surprise, Tess identifies another gentleman, carrying dreadlocks, as the one Olivia had in mind. Soon Tess realizes that Olivia's charming man is actually her cousin, George. Tess swiftly makes her way out of the kitchen to greet George. Later, Olivia approaches Camilla with a tray of mushroom soup, hoping to engage her in a conversation about her artworks. She's met with a polite refusal. Before Olivia can delve into her pitch, George intercepts her, inquiring about the contents of the cup she's carrying. After a swift explanation, Olivia redirects her attention to Camilla, eager to share her artworks. However, Camilla brushes off Olivia's enthusiasm, deferring any discussion to a later time. Just as Olivia is about to convince her, George accidentally collides with her, resulting in a spill of soup all over Camilla's dress. Camilla's anger flares, prompting her assistant to take her away from the scene. Embarrassed by the accident, Olivia attempts to apologize, but it's too late. In the aftermath of the unfortunate event, Olivia's boss steps in, offering a towel to help clean up the mess, but also delivering a crushing blow Olivia's termination from her job. Upon returning home, Olivia is weighed down by the unfortunate events involving Camilla. Seeking solace in her art, she gets her sketchbook and begins to draw. Tess joins her, offering words of comfort. As they sit together, Tess shares a glimmer of hope amidst the bad incident. She mentions George's remorse over the incident with Camilla and an intriguing idea she's come up with. She proposes to use George's car as an alternative means of travel, since flights to Nebraska are unavailable. Olivia is skeptical at first, but eventually agrees to Tess' plan. Later, they meet George at a coffee shop. He offers another heartfelt apology to Olivia for the unfortunate incident that led to her job loss. Tess rejoins them, bearing exciting news of a shared journey to the West, prompting a mix of surprise and intrigue from Olivia and George. Tess goes out to take a call, leaving George and Olivia alone. Olivia acts surprised by the road trip idea and questions George's involvement in the road trip. George insists that he's doing it of his own accord and that he's happy to help. Surprised by George's genuine intentions, Olivia raises a valid question, wondering why George doesn't opt for the convenience of shipping his car to Los Angeles instead. George explains that his father doesn't trust transport companies and he wants to savor the experience of driving it on a long journey. As Tess returns to the table, she presents the proposal of the road trip once more, seeking confirmation from Olivia and George. Olivia and George eagerly embrace the idea. The following morning, George arrives early at their apartment, ready to embark on their journey. As they take their time to come downstairs, George resorts to beep the horn, hoping to make them hurry up. 
Eventually, Olivia emerges with her luggage, greeted by the sight of George's car, affectionately dubbed Big Red. George offers to assist Olivia with her luggage, his curiosity piqued by the sight of her sketchbook. However, Olivia swiftly takes the book from him. Tess joins them outside, adding to the anticipation of the journey ahead. Inquiring about their first stop for coffee, Olivia is met with an unexpected restriction from George, stating no liquids or beverages allowed in or near the car. Disappointed but undeterred, Olivia and Tess attempt to negotiate with George, pleading for a brief caffeine fix to kickstart their journey but George remains holds on to his decision, prompting the duo to reluctantly agree and they begin their journey. Upon reaching Chicago, Tess bids farewell, leaving Olivia and George to resume their journey together. As they clock in several more hours on the road, George eventually pulls into a gas station to refuel his car. While George attends to the car, Olivia seizes the opportunity to grab some snacks from the convenience store. Eager to enjoy her snacks on the go, Olivia inquires if she can indulge in the snacks while driving, only to be met with George's steadfast adherence to his no eating in the car policy. Undeterred, Olivia attempts to nibble on a piece of licorice, only to discover it's frozen solid. Observing Olivia's plight, George retrieves the frozen licorice and tucking it into his jacket pocket to thaw. As they converse about Valentine's Day and the journey ahead, George eventually brings out the now-thawed licorice from his pocket, much to Olivia's delight. George explains that licorice is permissible in the car since it doesn't have crumbs. As they approach Valentine, Olivia asks George to pull over so she can take in the sights and sounds of her hometown. She steps out of the car and breathes in the fresh air, savoring the familiar smells and sounds. Without realizing it, she reaches for George's hand and holds it for a moment, before quickly pulling away. They get back in the car and drive to Olivia's house, where they meet her sister, Vanessa, and her son, Mickey. They exchange pleasantries with George and he leaves the house to continue his journey, but as George prepares to leave, his car won't start. Olivia's nephew comes out to investigate and notices that something is wrong with the car. He runs back inside to tell his mom, who comes out with Olivia to take a look. A mechanic named Ronald, who happens to be a family friend, pulls up and offers to help. He gets to work on the car, but it only becomes more damaged in the process. George becomes furious and starts yelling at Ronald, but Olivia intervenes, reminding him that everyone is only trying to help. She and Vanessa leave the two men to work on the car and go back inside the house. Back inside their home, emotions run high as Olivia confides in Vanessa about George's recent outburst. Together, they shift their focus to the upcoming preparations for the annual Valentine's Day parade. Following their discussion, Olivia and Vanessa make plans to dine at Barbara May's restaurant, a local favorite for hearty meals and warm camaraderie. Meanwhile, George and Ronald remain at the workshop, deep in discussion about the repairs needed to fix the car. Reflecting on his earlier behavior at Olivia's house, George extends a sincere apology to Ronald for his lapse in patience. As he rummages through the trunk of the car, his eyes fall upon Olivia's forgotten sketchbook. Determined to make amends, George seeks Ronald's guidance in order to locate Olivia's house to return the sketchbook. Upon learning of Olivia's likely whereabouts, George weighs his options and decides to go to Barbara May's restaurant. As Olivia and Vanessa enjoy their milkshakes at Barbara May's, they're interrupted by the arrival of the restaurant owner, Barbara May. Barbara May extends a warm greeting to Olivia, expressing her concern over the earlier altercation involving George. Olivia, however, downplays the incident, mentioning that George has already gone. Unexpectedly, George and Ronald make their entrance into the restaurant, catching Olivia off guard. Olivia approaches them to inquire about their presence. George reveals that the car won't be repaired anytime soon, extending a heartfelt apology to Olivia for his behavior at her house, stating that he already apologized to Ronald. Olivia retorts that her forgiveness isn't granted as easily as Ronald's. Barbara May approaches George, extending a friendly greeting. A conversation ensues between them. George offers a genuine compliment on her restaurant, to which Barbara May graciously expresses her gratitude. Seizing the opportunity, George inquires about the availability of rental rooms, having learned about it from Ronald. Barbara May confirms the availability and readily agrees to accommodate George's request for a room for the night. In the midst of their discussion, an unexpected arrival captures Olivia's attention, an old high school classmate with a baby in a stroller. Olivia warmly acknowledges her acquaintance, reminiscing about their shared experiences from their younger years. The conversation takes an unexpected turn when Olivia's friend proposes to commission a mural for her baby's room. Caught off guard by the request, Olivia hesitates. However, George intervenes, seizing the opportunity to embellish Olivia's achievements and success in New York. Impressed by Olivia's achievements, the lady expresses concern over affordability, prompting Olivia to offer a heartfelt friends and family discount, which she gratefully accepts before departing. Olivia requests to talk to George outside but he's carried away and doesn't hear her. Instead he's complimenting Barbara May's milkshakes and offering to buy a round for everyone in the restaurant. The customers start chanting George's name, much to Olivia's surprise and confusion. George approaches her and she brushes him off, and leaves the restaurant to go work on the external lighting on the street, leaving George feeling a bit confused. 
George tries to follow Olivia outside, but Vanessa tells him to give her some space. Just then, Miss Hackey, the former Valentine's Parade president, walks into the restaurant and starts complaining about how nothing is ready for the Valentine's Day Parade. She offers to stop by again the next day, but Vanessa assures her that everything is under control. Miss Hackey still looks skeptical, but eventually leaves. Meanwhile, under the glow of the streetlights, George meets Olivia setting up the street illuminations. Soon they find themselves in a moment of candid conversation. Olivia opens up about her reservations regarding George's exaggeration about her at the restaurant, expressing her doubts about her artistic prowess. George, in his defense, describes his remarks as a pre-truth, emphasizing his intention to uplift Olivia's spirits rather than deceive. Olivia isn't convinced, and tells him that she might just be a hack. But George insists that she's not a hack, and hands her sketchbook back to her. He tells her that he's seen her work and that she's truly a good artist. George reveals that his car will be fixed the next day, and then they'll go their separate ways. She jokes that maybe they'll throw him a milkshake parade to see him off. Olivia giggles, and flips the switch to turn on the street lights. The lights come on, and Olivia and George both smile, satisfied with the result. The next morning, Vanessa leaves for the barn to continue preparing for the Valentine's Day parade. While Olivia wakes up and goes to explore her late mother's art studio, she looks around at all the beautiful art, admiring her mother's talent. Meanwhile, George is up at Barbara May's diner, and notices some beautiful paintings on the walls. He is curious about the artist, Barbara May tells him that it's Olivia's mother. George is surprised and intrigued about the beautiful artworks. Back in Olivia's house, she is about to leave the house when Tess calls her. They chat for a while, and Olivia mentions that George is still in Nebraska. Later, Olivia asks Tess for George's father's address and goes to the post office to send him a piece of her art. When she arrives at the barn, she finds Miss Hackey sitting outside, looking annoyed. Miss Hackey starts to complain about how Vanessa is changing the Valentine's Day parade by wanting to put the finale float on a real car instead of the traditional flat on wheels. Olivia tries to convince her that it'll be beautiful, but Miss Hackey remains unconvinced and goes back to her seat, grumbling to herself. Olivia goes inside to meet her sister. The sisters talk about Miss Hackey's behavior and share memories of their mother and how much she loved the Valentine's Day parade. Olivia takes the opportunity to tell her sister that everything George said about her having a gallery was a lie. She then goes on to tell Vanessa everything that happened in New York, and how it led to her coming back to Valentine. The sisters hug and comfort each other. George is in Ron's workshop, searching for materials to fix his car, when he hears a car pull up outside. He turns to see Olivia getting out of her car. They chat for a few minutes, and Olivia reveals that she's looking for some aluminum for the float she's building for the Valentine's Day parade. They head outside to continue their search, and Olivia asks George what he would be doing if he weren't working for his father. George admits that he's more interested in making money than pursuing his passions. Olivia is surprised by his answer, and asks if he's ever thought about doing something he truly loves. As Olivia keeps questioning George about his passions, he finally admits that he's always wanted to run a non-profit organization. He tells her that his father won't allow it, and that he has to stick with the family business. Olivia is sympathetic, and tells him that she thinks he should pursue his dream. Soon he finds a cable for his car while Olivia finds a table that would be perfect for the float. They both walk towards it to carry it out of the building. As they carry it, their faces almost collide, and they both freeze for a moment, looking into each other's eyes. They snap out of it and continue carrying the table outside. Later, George is working on his car when Mickey walks into the workshop, asking if he can write his valentines there. Vanessa then rushes in and repeats the same request. George agrees, and offers to get Mickey some food or water, but Mickey says he's fine. Vanessa thanks George and leaves the workshop. George walks over to Mickey and tries to strike up a conversation. Mickey is curious about George and Olivia's relationship, and asks if they're boyfriend and girlfriend. George tells him that they're just friends, and Mickey responds that you don't have to be boyfriend and girlfriend to be Valentine's. As George talks to his father on the phone, Mickey sneaks a note into his jacket pocket. During the call, George mentions the idea of setting up a nonprofit, but his father is not interested, telling him to focus on one thing. George ends the call and continues talking to Mickey. While all this is happening, Miss Hackey has been observing the barn with a pair of binoculars. Meanwhile, Barbara May shares sweets to everyone in the barn, including Miss Hackey. She is initially hesitant, but she accepts the sweets. In the night, Ronald approaches George and tells him that he wasn't able to find a vintage alternator for his car, but he has friends who are still searching for one. They say goodnight and Ronald leaves. Just then, Miss Hackey emerges from the shadows, startling George. She tells him that she has a vintage car part for him, which he's surprised to hear. Miss Hackey takes George to the barn where the car for the parade is being built. When they reach the barn, George is amazed by the car. He inquires if it's okay to take the car's alternator, and Miss Hackey assures him that it's fine, since the car is just an old junk pile. George offers to pay for the part, but Miss Hackey refuses, telling him that she's happy to help. However, unknown to George Miss Hackey has an ulterior motive as she doesn't want a real car to be used for the Valentine's Day Parade. 
Later in the night, Olivia goes to Barbara May's looking for George, but can't find him there. Ronald walks in and tells Olivia that George might be in the workshop. Olivia leaves and heads to the workshop, where she finds George working on his car. George explains that he was able to fix his car thanks to Miss Hackey, leaving Olivia confused. The car starts successfully, and Olivia offers George a licorice, to which he jokes that it's her way of asking him to be her valentine. George says that he would like to stay for the parade the next day, but he can't because he has to leave that night. He goes on to explain that his life is very different from Olivia's, he's never had the opportunity to make his own decisions, or even figure out what he wants to do with his life. Olivia can sense that George is scared of something, and she asks him what it is. George tells her that he's afraid of disappointing his dad and being seen as a failure who couldn't carry on the family legacy. Olivia hands George the licorice and tells him to have a safe journey, and then she leaves the workshop. George calls out to her, wishing her a happy Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day, Olivia wakes up and heads to Barbara Mays to have some milkshakes. Vanessa bursts into the diner, saying that there's a code red situation and they rush out with her. Meanwhile, George is driving towards Los Angeles, but it seems like he won't make it to the board meeting in time. He decides to join the meeting via a conference call. Soon, when they arrive at the barn, Ronald is already there inspecting the car that they are planning to use for the parade. It appears that the alternator of the car is the same one that Miss Hackey gave to George the previous night. Olivia's mind starts racing, and she recalls what George had told her about Miss Hackey helping him fix his car. She becomes suspicious and wonders if there's more to the story than what she's been told. Just then, Olivia sees Miss Hackey in the corner of the barn, observing what's happening with the car. Miss Hackey sees that Olivia is watching her and quickly walks out of the barn. Olivia follows her outside, asking her if she knows what's going on with the float. Miss Hackey denies knowing anything, but Olivia tells her that George said she helped him fix his car. Miss Hackey retorts that it's her cousin's car, and she can do whatever she likes with it. Olivia grows frustrated with Miss Hackey's attitude towards the parade, and she accuses her of trying to sabotage the parade. Miss Hackey then reveals that she's upset because she lost the last election, after running unopposed for 30 years. Olivia lets her know that she created many magical parades during those 30 years. This lightens Miss Hackey and pushes her to reveal that it's been hard for her to hand over the reins to someone else. Olivia realizes that Miss Hackey is struggling to transition, and takes her back inside the barn. She makes Vanessa to understand that Miss Hackey will be the new parade marshal, as she won't be able to do the job herself. Vanessa seems hesitant but eventually agrees. Consequently, George is still on the road, preparing for the conference call with his father and the board members. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out the Valentine's note that Mickey had put in his pocket. He finally connects to the conference call and announces that he won't be taking up the role of CEO in his father's company. The room falls silent as everyone tries to process what they've just heard. His father is shocked and tries to interrupt, but George cuts him off, saying that he doesn't want to follow a predetermined path just because it's what's expected of him. He explains that he needs to follow his own path and make his own choices. He ends the call and begins the drive back to Valentine. Meanwhile, the parade begins and the town is filled with the sounds of laughter, music, and the rumble of excited crowds. Olivia and Vanessa are thrilled that their hard work has paid off, and they hug each other in excitement. They watch as the floats begin to move down the street, and Vanessa goes to join her husband and son in the parade. Back in Los Angeles, George's father opens the package that Olivia sent to him. Inside is a painting of his beloved car, Big Red, along with a note. The father is moved by the painting and the note, he smiles as he looks at the painting. The next day, Olivia is closing up the barn for the night, when she notices someone standing outside. It's George, with his car, Big Red. George walks up to her and reveals that he couldn't bring himself to leave Valentine, so he spent the night at Barbara Mays. He says that he realized he couldn't spend Valentine's Day anywhere else. Olivia is taken aback and doesn't know what to say. George hands her a milkshake and a card and asks her to be his Valentine. Olivia accepts and they share a passionate kiss. In that moment, everything seems to fall into place. They both realize that they've found something special in each other and they know that they want to explore this connection further. A year later, Olivia finally becomes one of Camilla's exclusive artists and now married to the love of her life, George. 